Today I'm going to be talking about The Binding of Isaac, a roguelite game released in 2011, at least the Flash version was. The remake would come a few years later, allowing the game to be played with more than 5 frames per second. I'm going to talk about the remake, Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I've played this game a bit, so I feel qualified to talk about what makes it so fun most of the time. The Binding of Isaac is a roguelite dungeon crawler in which you control this little guy called Isaac and get him through a deadly dungeon. I think the whole game is a metaphor for something and it's in his imagination or something like that, but I'm not here for that. The most fun part about this game is the huge variety of items you can find. These nuts. There's an item for everything. This item makes you shoot a big laser, makes you fly, it makes your character fat and fart abundant, gives you a shield, this item makes you a demon, this item gives you homing tears, this item summons a bunch of bombs, this item rerolls other items. This bean item doesn't really do anything. This item unlocks a big door, this item lets you jump across the room, this item spawns huge bombs, this item makes you huge, this item makes you shoot two tears at once, this item makes you shoot a big brain. And that's only a few of them. Each floor in the dungeon has one treasure room where these sacred items are found, and also a shop. Honestly, most of the items from the shop are some of the worst you can find in the game, and the main purpose of going here is to mess with the donation machine most of the time. The end of each floor has a boss room. These are usually the deadliest room on the floor, containing a huge monster that rewards you with another item once you defeat it. The boss items usually aren't anything crazy, but you can always count on them for some nice stat upgrades. There's a huge variety of bosses to fight, and some are more fair than others. Each floor also has secret and super secret rooms that you can get into with bombs if you're clever enough to figure out where they're hiding. Oh yeah, you also have a bomb key and coin count. This game has the magical ability to make sure to know which of these you need the least and make sure you have at least 10 of them. But when you need a key to unlock the treasure room, one of the most important mechanics of this game is the devil and angel rooms. Sometimes after the boss you get an opportunity to make a deal with the devil and get super powerful items in exchange for hearts. However, if you're a good boy and skip the devil room, you might be rewarded later with an angel deal, which offers powerful items as well, but they're free. That's what you get for being pure and holy, except if you attack the angels and take their key pieces to fight Mega Satan. There are a few bonus rooms as well. Crawl spaces, which always make me super excited only to have the most bottom of the barrel loot. Arcades, which let you partake in the beautiful act of exchanging money for random goods. Gambling and dice rooms, which you should be very afraid to walk on without the mod that tells you what they'll do. There are also trinkets, which you can hold only one of at a time unless you have the trinket bag or whatever it's called. They provide some useful effects, but most of them aren't anything too crazy. Except Cancer and Goat Horn, those trinkets make everything feel okay. Also, if you get three similar items, it gives you a transformation based on the items. Some of the transformations are funny or useful, but some are pretty useless. So when you go to the next floor, what happens? And how many floors does this game have anyway? And what's the final boss? Uh. Yeah, since this game came out, it's gotten a few updates and DLCs that extend the game slightly. I'm not going to explain all these paths in detail, because honestly, I don't even have it all memorized, but I think you get the point. As you saw from the previous diagram, this game also has like 10 final bosses, ranging from pretty easy to hell itself. I think Delirium might be the single worst piece of content in any game. Let me explain why. He transforms into the different bosses you fought along the way, but he's so ridiculously buggy that you get randomly damaged by his janky ass teleporting all around the arena wherever he feels like it with no warning. Still easier than bloat, though. But I haven't talked about one of the most important elements of this game yet, the characters. You see, you're not always playing as Isaac. Well, I mean, in Delorean. You are, but that's not, not what we're talking about right now. There are tons of different characters. I think the developer was naming them after biblical characters, but he kind of gave up on that halfway through. Most of the early characters are just Isaac with a different starting item, but some of the later ones no, get super no, crazy. No, no. The Lost, who dies if he takes damage twice in one room. The Forgotten, who can swing this bone club around and go ghostly. And Jacob and Esau, who you have to control both of them at once, which is just as fair and fun as it sounds. As you might expect from a game like this, there are like a million different enemies, ranging from the basic Gaper, who just walks toward you, to the Trite, which will jump all the way across the room and kill you. The Host, who takes a sweet time to come up from the ground, wasting precious seconds on the clock, and many, many more. You don't even have to only play the normal mode either. You can also go for green mode, where you buy everything with sweet cash that you get from defeating waves of enemies, and hard mode, which is, well, hard. But the latest DLC, you can even join a friend in and play co-op if you feel like suffering together. The developer of this game is called Edmund McMillan, and I have no idea what he was thinking with some of these features. For example, if he feels like it, you'll randomly get a curse at the start of a floor that hurts you for that entire level until you move on. All in all, The Binding of Isaac is quite a ride to play. Every time you die, you ask yourself, what's the point? Why am I even playing this RNG-filled, unfair BS game? Why do I even play video games at all? And then you remember, and your sense of humanity comes flooding back when you walk into an angel room and see the sacred heart.